A 105 millimeter hole isn't large. It's just big enough to fit an orange. But it can also contain a good size rat. And in the field of nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR, that is big. That size is one of the most important features of one of the National High Magnetic Field Lab's most important instruments, our 900 megahertz ultra-wide bore NMR magnet. A bore is a hollow center of a research magnet where scientists put their experiments. It's also where the field created by the magnet is the strongest. For a magnet of its type and strength, the 900 megahertz magnet has the widest bore in the world, wide enough to fit research animals such as insects, birds, hamsters, rats. That makes the 900, as we like to call it, the strongest MRI machine in the world. MRI is a kind of NMR. In NMR, scientists use magnetic fields and radio waves to find the precise location and orientation of certain atoms in the materials they're studying. MRI experiments locate the hydrogen protons in a human or animal soft tissue. That information helps scientists create a picture of the brain or spinal cord, for example. Our magnet is called the 900 megahertz because that is the resonant frequency of the hydrogen protons found throughout the body in water. We sometimes change the instrument's frequency to target other atoms, such as sodium, for MRI and NMR. Most people have heard of MRIs. Some have even been inside of one. Those bores have to be pretty wide to accommodate your average human. The wider the bore, the harder it is to generate high magnetic fields. MRI machines typically generate fields of 1 to 3 tesla, the scientific unit of measure for magnetic field strength. R900, with its much smaller bore, creates a far stronger field, 21.1 tesla. Higher field means the pictures generated with the 900 are far more detailed than what you could get at the hospital. That's why researchers come to the Mag Lab's Tallahassee, Florida headquarters to use the instrument. They study cancer, stroke, drug abuse, and degenerative brain diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. But their patients aren't people. They're small models of people. Suzanne Kappendike of the Florida State University Medical School hopes her study of zebra finches will shed light on drug abuse in humans. We are studying the effects of nicotine in the zebra finch. And what I'm interested in is what are the effects of nicotine on the brain of these finches. The 900 gives Kappendike highly detailed brain scans of the birds. Equally important, it allows her to study them over long periods of time. So what we do then in the 900 is we go there before we give any drugs to these animals. So we take a brain scan, the, the animals are coming back to the recording cages, we start our experiment and like two or three weeks later, we bring back the animal to the magnet, to the 900. We rescan that animal and then we have two templates which we can put on top of each other and we can see how nicotine can affect the brain nucleus. The 900 was designed and built at the lab to the tune of 16 million dollars. It's made from 153 kilometers or 95 miles of superconducting wire wound into seven internesting coils. Fashioned from niobium tin and niobium titanium, these wires carry 300 amps of current, enough to power two or three homes. The current travels around in a spiral, generating a magnetic field in the center. The superconducting materials have the ability to carry electricity without any resistance or friction, so it just keeps on going. No voltage necessary. There is a catch, though. The superconductors only operate at very cold temperatures, so the magnet is encased in a container called a cryostat, filled with liquid nitrogen and liquid helium, which keep the magnet at negative 271 degrees Celsius, which is negative 457 degrees Fahrenheit. Most magnets here at the lab are resistive magnets. They use quite a bit of electricity. Free electricity is a nice benefit of this unplugged superconducting model, but it's not the main selling point at least for scientists. What they love is the instrument's homogeneity. The magnetic field is virtually the same throughout the time and space needed for the experiment. That means better data for scientists. This is especially important in NMR spectroscopy, a field that probes structures on an entirely different scale than MRI. This was actually the technology that led to the development of MRI um, many, many years ago. So you can think of this as an MRI experiment 
where we actually characterize an image of the individual molecules. Among other projects, MagLab scientists have been mapping out 3D images of the type A flu virus and studying the bacterium that causes tuberculosis. NMR program director Tim Cross has been examining proteins that exist on the surface of TB. Knowledge that could lead to new treatments for disease that kills 2 million people a year worldwide. Well, if you have a three-dimensional image of the protein, one can then imagine how you could uh, bind a small molecule like a drug to the protein and inactivate that protein. The making of the 900 spanned more than a decade, from the design of engineer Dennis Markowitz to final tests. It was a daunting job. Some felt sure it would fail. The interesting thing is, when we started this project, people didn't really want to build it in industry. So we found out a way to build it here. Assembling the magnet demanded patience, precision, and persistence. It's, it's not a simple machine. Otherwise, you might see more of these in the world, but no, there's only one. There's only one of this size. Lee Marks, lead technician on the project, spent seven years building the magnet. He did everything from winding the wire to installation. His biggest challenge was joining segments of superconducting wire so that the current would flow across the joints without generating heat. That was probably the most stress that I had to, to make all these joints. One mistake could destroy an entire coil. You can't just run down the lows and buy some more of this wire. The creative, intellectual, and physical effort proved well worth it. Since the instrument was commissioned, scientists and engineers have been exploring the capabilities of this giant tool, developing and testing new applications and instrumentation. MRI researchers, for example, have studied a wide range of medical issues using a variety of models, including genetic mutations in fruit flies, muscle degeneration in mice, brain injuries in rats, and osteoarthritis in hamsters. They use special probes developed by our world-class team of probe designers and engineers, like the unique rodent probe that delivers anesthesia, monitors the animal's breathing, and keeps it at a comfortable temperature while inside the magnet. MagLab researcher Sam Grant uses the rodent probe to study ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. With mice's models, he tracks how ALS changes brain and spinal cord structures over time. This can't be done in humans, because patients can't foretell when they will get the disease. Such longitudinal MRI studies can only be done with animal models. And we can look at this at different stages in the, uh, in the course of the disease and hopefully look at uh, identify windows when we can actually institute a very useful treatment for, the, for either reversing the course of the disease or, or more likely at least uh, prolonging uh, the life of the animal. And hopefully we can translate that into human studies. Long-term studies have big benefits both from a scientific and humane point of view. Before I had the option of going to the 900, I had to sacrifice animals before to make a baseline, and I had to sacrifice animals after. But the problem is that an animal is not its own control, so I always have a group of before and I have a group after. What I have now is I have that an animal is, is its own control, which is very important. So I reduced the number of animals used, and I increase the possibility of finding something because I look in the same pool of animals over and over again. Amazing what you can find inside the space the width of an orange. And we are just beginning to explore the applications of this powerful machine. Time will tell where the basic research done in this magnet will lead. Just as its makers ventured into uncharted territory with the building of this instrument, so now do the researchers who are uncovering new secrets in biology and chemistry.